Okay, today is Tuesday, the 28th of October, 2008. We're at the New York State Military Museum in Saratoga Springs, New York. And uh, the interviewer is Wayne Clark. And today we are interviewing uh, Mr. Uh, John uh, Mossy. Uh, sir, for the record, would you please state your full name, your date and place of birth? No, no uh, full name is John George. The middle issue is G, John George Morsey. Okay. Uh, I was born uh, in January 1st, 1919. So uh, there's, uh, this, this January coming, I'm going to be 90. Wow. Okay. And uh, whereabouts were you born? In Waterford, New York. Okay. And that's where I still live. Okay. Did you uh, attend school in Waterford? I graduated from Waterford High School. Okay. What year did you graduate? In uh, 1937. Okay. 1937. And uh, when you graduated from high school, what did you do next? Um, let's see. What I, I worked uh, at the, the Water Lead Arsenal. Okay. I went and worked at the Water Lead Arsenal. That's really was the next thing I did. And then, in the meantime, I got courses. You know, took took courses. What happened is my dad died when I was 16 years old, uh -huh. and the, the working man of the family was no longer there, you know, so, uh -huh. so uh, but I did have a, a brother and two sisters. And, uh, okay, and uh, what, did, what did you do there at the arsenal? Um, I was uh, doing drawing there at the arsenal, mechanical, okay. Okay. mechanical drawing at the arsenal. All right. And uh, do you rem remember where you were when you heard about Pearl Harbor? Well, I was, in, uh, I was at my wife's high house. We, I don't think we were, we were not married at the time. We were in the living room, and the next door neighbor came in to tell her we were sitting in her living room. Uh -huh. The next door neighbor came in to tell us that, about Pearl Harbor. Okay. And. Um, <clears throat> Did you expect you'd be going into the service pretty soon at that point? No, I didn't, because, uh, well, I was in the ar did I, I was in the arsenal. Yeah. I was working in the arsenal, and I thought I would be exempt for a while, and, uh, but uh, eventually they caught up to me, and, and I went into the service. Uh, okay, were you drafted? I was drafted. Okay, and uh, you were drafted into the army? Right on the Air Corps. Okay. And uh, you went in in February of 1943? For, for February 10th, 1943. Okay. And um, where where did you go for your basic training? Well, I went to, um, I have here, uh, Camp Upton, New York, is where I ended up. Mm -hmm. and I don't, I don't, we didn't have any basic training there. It was uh, just to get all the information from us. Camp Upton, New York. Okay. And I en ended up down in Florida, in, in, in Florida, where okay. I, I had the basic training. Okay. Is that right for you? Okay. And uh, what was basic training like? Uh, well, one thing I didn't tell you is the day I went into service, I sprained my ankle. And uh, what happened is the doctor wanted to defer me uh -huh. for a month, and I said, absolutely not. And I went in, and so I kind of hobbled through basic training. Uh, you know, uh, after running through the, the, the course, yep. you know, they, I, I went through it once, you know, hobbling along, and they said, you can step to one side. <laughs> but, uh, so, so that's, that's you know, what happened with, with the, the, the training. Okay. And then, then, then I shipped out. Was that your first time away from home? Uh, okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. First time away from home. Okay. But I was married when I went in the service. I was very married. Okay. And I have the date on here, you know, when, when we were married. Okay. Uh, when, once you completed your basic training, where did you go from there? Uh, from we. We went up to Michigan. We went up to Michigan, and um, 
what we were studying was uh, 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 now uh, the armament, you know, the guns mm -hmm. used in aircraft. That's that's what I was studying there. Uh, okay. And we had to take take the both things apart and put them back together, and we had to do it blindfolded. But that was uh, you know, part of the training. Uh huh. And that was um, was 50 caliber machine gun. I, uh, a 37 millimeter, a 20 millimeter, and a 37 caliber machine mm -hmm. gun. There was three three different guns that we were studying here in Michigan. Okay. And then from there, we uh, ended up in Savannah, Georgia, uh -huh. and that's where I met up with the company I was with. Well, the whole when the, the 2003rd Ordnance Maintenance Company. That's where it, it formed. There in Savannah, Georgia. Okay. And, uh, and so uh, we went then by train to Texas. Mm -hmm. We uh, traveled uh, on train across the Mississippi. It was quite interesting <laughs> with, with train cars, you know. But and then we ended in, in Texas. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I just have to think. Uh, uh, it was one. One uh, Kelly Field. Okay. Kelly Field in Texas is where we, we ended up. And, uh, okay. Is that where the unit formed? The uh, unit formed in Savannah, Georgia, uh -huh. and, and uh, everybody that was there to join up, we all traveled by train to Texas. Okay. We are already formed. Okay. We, we traveled on to Texas. And, all right. And, uh, so. Uh, How long were you there? In in Texas. We were there until, uh, I don't know if I mentioned here, uh, I was, they were shipping us overseas. Okay. And uh, so we, were, we all came up by train to New Jersey. And, uh, and from there we got on to Queen Elizabeth. Okay. And, uh, and, and it took us over to England. We ended up in Scotland. And then the, 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 the dock was in Scotland, and then we went by train down to the base that uh, that I ended up. And I don't know if I have it in the, any of those pictures. Uh, uh, was it Melbourne, uh, Melch, Melchbourne, Melchbourne Park? Melchbourne Park, Bedfordshire. Yeah. Okay. Melchbourne Park. Oh, okay. Is, is that's where all of these pictures are from? Okay, and you were with the Eighth Air Force, right? Right, we were with the Eighth Air Force. Okay. And uh, what was what was your daily life like during that period of time? What kind of job did they have you doing? Well, I ended up in a gun room. Uh huh. And uh, and I was taking care of all. We were all issued. Carbines, for instance, uh -huh. we were all issued, and, and I, I, was, I had the gun room. I was in charge, taking care of all the guns in there. But uh, what happened is uh, I heard of, about another group forming, and it sounded very interesting to me. <laughs> so uh, my buddy, I, I taught him what I knew about the guns, uh -huh. and, I, and I went to my supervisor and, uh, and asked if I could be transferred to this armament unit. Uh huh. The uh, armament unit uh, was was under it was really under the 2003rd, but it was like a branch off. You know? Okay. And so uh, from that point, then I went on to a very interesting jobs. And, uh, and of course, in one of the jobs, I ended up going uh, coming back. I flew home. And all all this time travel was all by by. Uh, Boat or trains, uh -huh. but in this case, when I went back to Washington to study about the, the proximity fuse in D.C., I flew and, uh, to the Azores, and uh, we were supposed to go to Newfoundland, but uh, something happened to the plane when, when we come in, and so uh, we stayed overnight, and they come up with a, an emergency plane for us to take it, and we flew. Uh, to the Azores, 
in, in the, ended up in Miami. Uh huh. That's it. And then I took a train uh, back. Okay. Okay. Do you want to talk about that uh, school? Uh, learning about the proximity fuse. What? What? Yeah. The... Yeah. You know, I have. Uh, Here's a, there, it's a, oh, this one, there's one in it. Here's, here's a story about the, the proximity fuse in the newspaper. Okay. And uh, what it, the proximity fuse, uh, what it was, is it was a radio, uh, it would uh, emit a single signal and uh, it would be reflected off a metal water uh -huh. object and, uh, and then the signal could, would come back to the fuse and when it got up to a certain level it would trip it would trip the fuse oh i see so we would get air bursts mm -hmm. from from this where all, all the, the when the fuse went off you you were in the air so, mm -hmm. so, and they, they figured they could do a lot of damage you know with that type and okay that, they they tell in there you know how much it costs developing. But, you know, where I, I studied uh, in, in Washington and then also over to. Um, the, okay. In the National Bureau of Standards, Ordnance Development Division, that's where I studied about the proximity fuse. Okay. And, uh, now that, that school, you were only there for a week, and then they sent you back to England. Well, I was there. I was there longer than that. But my, uh, for, for that. Uh, okay. It says on the use uh, class duration was one week. Oh. Well, I estimated. Well, te that's teaching. Oh, okay. So I ended up, uh, you know, back in England, and uh, and I was teaching. I oh. Was, I went to an ordnance department. Okay. And they had me teaching. And the uh, course was eight weeks. It, well, it lasted eight weeks. Okay. But the, the the course was actually one week per session. Oh, I see. And, and so we had uh, both officers and enlisted men teaching them. Okay. About the. And, and what rank were you at that point? Probably corporal. I was corporal for. <laughs> on, okay. I, I was corporal. Uh, you know, I do have. Uh, Okay, now you mentioned uh, you worked on the Project Aphrodite drones. Can you, can you tell us what that was about? Yeah, that, uh, you know, I got to, let me get to something that I can, Operation Caster was what it was called. Okay. Operation Caster. And uh, it began in June the 23rd, 1944. Mm-hmm. Uh, with planned attacks on uh, the V site bunkers. Now, this, the Germans come up with uh, uh, sending over to England. You know, they were sending a, a buzz bomb, they called it. And, uh, and here, there's a picture of the buzz bomb. Okay. And, and then also uh, the V 2 rocket. But uh, the, the buzz bomb, uh, they, they built a, a three story construction. And they had a chute, quite a few feet long, and that's when the buzz bomb took off mm -hmm. from that chute. And its target was like the London Bridge, you know. That's, it never did hit what the, the uh -huh. real target was, you know. But uh, but anyway, that's uh, how I got involved with uh, with that. And now, in, if I want to read this. Um, uh, so uh, what we had is uh, a, a radio-controlled bomber. Uh, what I was working on is a, a dis what we call destructor destructor board, and uh, what it was is uh, is a, a tumbler switch uh, on this board, and that tumbler switch uh, if it had a, a shock in any direction. It would. Uh, uh, then close the circuit, and then um, and it would end up uh, feeding bi batteries uh, to go over to 
this primer cord, which was running all over the place, mm -hmm. and that primer cord was uh, tied right into explosives. And, uh, so that's, in other words, um, uh, what they would do is uh, they, were, they radio control uh, this uh, drones. They were called drones. Uh, I worked on ten of them. Uh -huh. uh, they're, they're drones, and um, uh, we, we, uh, what I did is, uh, is, is worked on this panel and put it at, at the pilot escape hatch just before he gets, gets out of the plane and he, he could arm the plane. There were also fuses up in the, in the plexiglass, the nose uh, of the fighter and uh, of the bomber. Uh -huh. and, uh, so uh, now, this what kind of bomber was it? B seventeen. Okay. Yeah. They did have uh, B twenty four, and and later on in here, I tell about how uh, our president's brother, um, you know, uh, Kennedy. Oh yes. Kennedy. This is how uh, he died in one of these. Joe Kennedy. Uh, right? Joe Kennedy. Yeah. Died. It, it blew up in the air. Mm -hmm. uh, now, uh, see, what we would do is. Uh, I'm reading this. Um, the B-17 Fortress normally carried about uh, 5,000 pound, pounds, and uh, and these B-17s that we were working on had outlived their usefulness, and uh, and so uh, they had a, a B-34 Ventura, and that was a that was a control that uh, the bombardiers had uh, that when they would drop. When they would drop these certain uh, bombs, uh, the, the, they had radio control on the fins on the on the bomb, so that they could, uh, if they were trying to hit a dam or something, they could control the, mm -hmm. the flight within within reason. Yeah. But uh, so that was that was uh, that um, uh, B-34 Ventura, and that's what the, we used to control. Um, the B-17, there was a, a, a drone that I worked on, and there was a mothership. The mothership okay. was at 10,000 feet. The drone was at 400 feet. And, uh, and so the big problem we had is that uh, visibility wasn't always the greatest, and, and the, head, the, the mothership had to be in full control mm -hmm. uh, of this drone. Yep. And, uh, so, uh, and then when they got to a target, then the mothership would tell the drone to dive. And, and then that's when all our explosives that we had in here, and, the, and I, I tell them here, you know, how, how much explosives. In fact, it was so much that uh, those ten that we put together, um, before they use them, they were sinking in the macadam because of their weight. Mm -hmm. So they'd have to uh, start the engines up and move them to a different hard stand. Okay. So now, this Operation Caster was a highly classified undertaking and in December 44 at Milchbourne Park, uh, that's uh, Sergeants Lahun, Lun, Iopini, and myself, we, uh, we received a commendation from uh, Major General Kerr, Kern and also uh, Bronze Star Award. Mm -hmm. We all got a, as a result of the work we did on, on these uh, ten. Here now, what, what the other three men did is they built they built a wooden floor. Uh, there's, uh, are you familiar with a B-17 as a, as a catwalk? Yeah. Uh, where the doors mm -hmm. swing open. And so they built a floor, uh, right, even with the catwalk. And, uh, and that's where uh, all these boxes of uh, Torpex and TNT, they were put in boxes on, on top of this floor and they were all cabled together and then the cables run down under, so came out the, under, uh, the, under the, the, now the wings are, or the, the Bombay doors are not going to open so the cables just came across and they just tied them down underneath. Mm -hmm. and, uh, 
for, for that. Uh, uh, well, I guess that's. Okay. Did you go up on any of these flights at all when uh, you're testing? Or? I, I did uh, when, when we had. Uh, there's some pictures there where I uh, I went up. I did fly in the in. The, you know, I had to take pictures in, in the B-17. Mm -hmm. We had the the bomb bay doors open, and, and I just laid prone, and somebody sat on my feet. So I went for and I was taking movies uh -huh. of of the bombs dropping down. Oh. So, so and then I did uh, on uh, a P thirty eight. I I flew in that. That's when we were um, um, we had a surplus. that I tell about in here of uh, British bombs. Yeah, I had British bombs, and we also had a surplus of German bombs. Uh, capture, captured on the continent, and we ran tests to, uh, to use them on an American air aircraft. And so we wrote reports on how we did it mm -hmm. and sent them on to our headquarters, which wasn't far from where we were located. So that's uh, been in there. I also mentioned that I assisted in the Chowhound project. Okay, uh, do you want to tell us about that? The, well, that again. Uh, for the Chauhan, they put wooden floors again in, in that same area, and then uh, what we did is uh, use canned food or any anything that could withstand a low altitude free fall. In other words, uh, the B-70 would come in at a low level, as low as it could get, and, uh, and to drop over the German prisoners of war camp. That's, that's what oh. it was used. Okay, so you were dropping, they were dropping food. They were dropping food. Okay. Yeah. And now, uh, and the wooden floors were installed in the 17, and canned food and anything that could withstand a very low altitude free fall. So uh, we opened those doors and, and let all that food drop down. Okay. Were you on any of those missions? Well, no, the only one I was on was the one where we uh, went to the, it's called the Wash in England, where um, uh, it was uh, some, of the, some of the bombs, the, the, the German bombs or the British bombs, we went out to, to drop them uh, to see if we could handle it all right. And that's been so I flew in uh, a P-38. Mm -hmm. But uh, normally I, just for, Test purposes, I'd be up, you know, never, okay. never involved with any missions. Okay. And uh, you mentioned um, <clears throat> uh, what some of your friends, Bill Zapolsky. Oh, oh, yeah. Want me to tell you that sure. story? Sure. Uh, now, I had three buddies there in the service, you know, and uh, Bill Zapolsky was one of them. And uh, so what happened is. Uh, I have uh, what person would you remember best from your service and why? One of, one of my three personal friends, Bill Zapolsky, Bill encountered the wrath of Nazi, Nazi Germany before America entered World War II. Bill was born and grew up in Queens, New York, and his parents immigrated from Poland, and his dad owned and operated a bakery shop. His family was large, and he with the others helped in the bakery shop. And after finishing high school, Bill won a scholarship to study in the University of Warsaw. Of course, Bill could speak Polish terrifically. Uh, to Warsaw, Poland, he won a scholarship. And he was, this was his location when the Nazis attacked Poland in the year 1933. And the bombing of Warsaw was devastating. And Bill, with others, checked into the American embassy on how to return home. Bill and some other students decided on a route through Berlin. Here the Germans are destroying, and they decided on a route through Berlin, and other students decided on an eastern route through Russia. Now, the writer has since forgotten the maze that Bill eventually sailed home, 
person sailed home and then later joined up with us. Uh, but um, years later, World War II, after World War II, the Warsaw American students, there's quite a few of them, held a meeting in Chicago. And the members, unwilling to take a chance going through Berlin, ended up in Russia. And they were detained there until the end of the war. <laughs> so that's, that's the story I wanted to tell about the building. Okay. Any other stories you'd like to relate? Well, you know, I, let's see. Here, uh, it was, uh, as World War II ended in 45, all members of the 2003rd eventually returned to the U.S. We were all have been in England. Mm -hmm. And uh, in November of 1984, John became a widower and his wife, Mary B. passed away, leaving John and our uh, two children, uh, Jim and Chris. And then in 1985, a meeting in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, instigated by some three or four members, after collecting names and addresses, they, uh, they started an annual meeting of the 2003rd Ordinance Association. And, and this lasted for 19 years. And, uh, and after the, the seventh session, I became the chairman. And what I, a new, a new location was selected each year where we would meet around the country on a vote. And the chairman may visit ahead to uh, map, out, map out an itinerary. A copy of the itinerary eventually, because of our, and he closes a copy of, that's, that's in here, there's a, there's a copy of that. The itinerary that uh, the, the 19 years, fine. But anyway, um, eventually we we, we had went for 19 years, and be, now because of our age, we held our final meeting in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. The year was 2003 that mm -hmm. we uh, ceased, and that was an appropriate year for the 2003rd Ordinance Company. Oh. So, it ties us in together. Huh. Okay. Um, <clears throat> you remember uh, where you were when you heard about the death of President Roosevelt? Uh, what was it like when the war ended? Where, whereabouts were you when, when the war in Europe ended? Were you in England at that time? Yes. Yeah. Was there a lot of celebration? Well, you know, what happened is I had gone on to Brussels, to Brussels, France, and uh, so yeah, we 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 did celebration there and all of it. Of the people I was with, I, I had left 2003rd at that time and mm -hmm. had gone to Europe, and, uh, and of course I ended up visiting all through, uh, uh, well, Brussels, Germany, Paris. Okay. And, uh, okay. Uh, visited all that, that area. That's that's what I did, you know, after after the war. All right, now, when the war ended with Japan, were you still over in Europe? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was on the continent when, when that happened. And so, I eventually, uh, what I did is, I uh, took a train down to Versailles, France, mm -hmm. Versailles, and, uh, and that's when I got on a ship coming back, and it all, the, the, it was, uh, our, the number of years of service, we, we had uh, these stripes on here, you know, yep. and, and I had received five additional ones because of the, because of the uh, funds, because of the, uh, the, uh, the uh, it takes a while to come here, uh, because
because of the award I got, uh -huh. I had five additional ones, so that, that helped me in uh, exiting. Okay, so you had enough points to I had enough points get out. then to get out, so that I, and I ended up going by train down to Versailles, and then got on a ship, and what was it, a Dutch freighter, uh -huh. <laughs> is, is what we crossed the Atlantic and uh, came into Okay, and what, whereabouts were you discharged? Uh, was it uh, Fort, Fort Dix? Dix? Okay. Fort Dix is where I discharged. Okay. And uh, once you were discharged, um, did you make use of the GI Bill? Yes. Okay. And yes. Uh, and I was, what I was going, I was going to RPI nights. Uh huh. Working, I got a, a job. Where was I working? For the GE, because my brother had been in up at the GE for you know for years. My brother was about ten years older than I. Uh -huh. So uh, he told me to come up to the GE. You know, and I, I got out and I got a job right away. I always talk about that. Because he says you better hurry up. Uh, the union's going out on strike. This is in Schenectady. Uh -huh. And he said, you better hurry up and get here and sign up before the strike, which I did. And so uh, the strike lasted eight weeks, and the GE paid me eight weeks that I had worked one day. Wow. <laughs> so I always felt pretty good about that. Now, did you end up getting a degree through RPI? Uh, I didn't, no. What I did is, is I have, I, I mentioned here um, that I have equivalent of three years. Mm -hmm. I put all the, the night classes together. And uh, so, so I didn't, that, the, the company sent me out to Detroit. I was there for a long time and that kind of held up my you know, okay. further education because I was traveling, I was traveling back and forth to Detroit from Schenectady. Okay. fly out on a Monday and back home on a Friday. <laughs> and, and I did that for a year. Okay. And of course, that, that kind of stopped my, my further education. Although I did take courses at, at GE. I mentioned it here. Okay. Courses that I took at, at GE while, while that was going on. All right. Um, now, you put together a nice album with... Uh, Photographs. Um, do you want to? We'll hold these up, and you want to talk about the the photos you've taken? Yeah, I took all those photos, except I didn't take the the. Uh, um, if you'll just the hold, hold them up and ex explain, you don't have to explain all of them, but you know, pick some out and tell us about them, and and I can zoom right in with the camera. I can zoom right in. There. Yep. All right. Well. This is uh, Station 572, Milchbourne Park, 8th Air Force Service Command. And this was, these are pictures of September 1942 until December 1945. Okay. That's the period this covers. And now, uh, when we first arrived there from, from Scotland, we come in, you know, by by train. We we um, landed there in Presswick, Scotland, and, and then by train we ended up coming on down. Well, I'm not sure if we went in down to London, but then then we ended up with with trucks taking us to Melbourne Park. We okay. Had, it was trucks that took us to Melbourne. And that building there is where you were headquartered? Yeah, this was the Lord St. John's Manor House. Okay, and, and, and that's how it looks today? And that's, yes, yes. This okay. Is, this picture is uh, post-World War II, and, and actually what it is is uh, there are ten condominiums. So, uh, so uh, all the people bought into the place. Oh, I see. And, uh, so, uh, so what we did is uh, when we got permission, to put that uh, uh, the plaque that I had made from from the owners, they said, "Go ahead." You know? Okay. And that's when we uh, 
had a big ceremony, and there was a, uh, I don't know if a priest, a minister, they all talked, and, it, and it's on the CD. Okay. I have there. And, um, so, uh, and that's, that's the way the building is now. And, and this was after, this was after we had occupied it during the war. Okay. And then they, that's when they made the, the ten condominiums. Okay. All right. Do you want to show us some more pictures? Yeah. yeah. Now here's now here's a on the second floor is this mirror in one of the rooms on the second floor of the manor house, and it has it's a whole story carved around the outline of the mirror. Okay. You can't see that here, but that's what it was. It's a whole story carved in wood. Okay. You know, now this. Uh, the station headquarters is the adjutant's office. Max Lamar is the adjutant. And, uh, and this was his office, and that had to be on the first floor of the manor house. Okay. And, and here is the, the telephone uh, where the switchboard was. And these were um, uh, women, uh, English women, that were hired uh, as phone operators. Okay. And, uh, and, that's, and that's the it was actually a, a separate room, you know, so they could close the door to, to take care of the telephones. Okay. And, and here, uh, this is uh, the, the, this is the minister's uh, office on the second floor of the manor house, and uh, and that's where uh, this Alrowina arranged our music. We sang in harmony. And that's okay. and that, that one right there. Yeah, just uh, hold was, that up. So this, this, we actually started as, as a quartet with Al Plan, and uh, uh, Jim Wheeler decided to go on to OCS school, and he left, and so Al Rowena had to rewrite okay. the music for a trio now. Okay. And, and that's and so uh, what we did is uh, we uh, sang. We had we had a. Oh, I'll show you later. We had a theater, and also we went to different British uh, places mm -hmm. uh, to perform. And then what we did is we went, we went to our uh, the head of our base and got permission to drive down to London, and in, uh, in order to make a recording, and the recording was made on a on a, a the turntable, and mm -hmm. we put out a disc. Yeah. And uh, so we went. Uh, we just uh, floated around in, in London until we found a studio, that, and we went and uh, we went up and uh, and we sang and uh, it had curtains all over the place and, and we couldn't hear one another singing, <laughs> and so we had a we had them uh, open all of, all of the or all of the drapes. Uh -huh. and, and had, in order, you know, we we couldn't uh, take the de de deafness because we couldn't hear one another. Okay. You know, and so so anyway. That we ended up in it with a disc. Now uh, we had two masters that we made. We gave one to the, the head of our base for letting us take the jeep, you know. And then the other master, Al Rowena, the arranger, sent it to his mother in California. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I contacted her, and, and, and she made some copies and mailed them to me. And wherever she had the copies made, it had a terrible background noise. Mm -hmm. And that was a, a thing that we, we had e even on these uh, difficulty. Uh, my uh, my brother's son took and digitized it from a, from a disc. Mm -hmm. We had problems trying to get that background noise that whatever happened, you know, those copies. Uh, uh -huh. So so that's the okay. That's the story with that. All right, and that's the the ministers. Uh, that's what yep. we would rehearse. Okay. Now, now this is a. a, a and I'm a, I'll have to turn it so I can read it. This is a, the old English pub, it was in the in the basement of the manor house. Okay. The different ones would use that. Okay. Now here is a, this is the the cottage, the tower house. Now, if you go to that. CD right here. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll see. Uh, you can pick that. You can see the, the manor house. And if you look, 
if you look, you'll see a, a building, a, a steeple. In that picture there, you, yep. see, you see a steeple? That, that's this dower house. Okay. And, uh, and that's a, so, so we were the 2003rd at the manor house, and then there was the 2006th uh, at the dower house. Okay. We were stationed there. And okay. then uh, in between the two places were these cottages. We call them the, the Park Row Cottages. And here are the Row of Cottages. Now these are uh, people that were farmers and, uh, and did various jobs for the, the rich. Okay. So now uh, that, uh, this cottage separated the manor house at one end and the dower house at the other end. They were separated by, by these cottages. Okay. And, uh, and then here, we had a, a St. Mary Magdalene Church. It was right on the property. And, uh, and this is a picture of it inside. Okay. And uh, so, uh, so a minister used to come in and uh, perform services in okay. Mary Magdalene Church. There's a big history of, uh, of that church. Okay. It was built way, way back. And now here is the, the theater that we built on our base it was right alongside of the manor house. These are all pictures of the theater. Where we had uh, performers come. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, there was a Red Cross, but there was another group that used to travel around. And, uh, and he would come in and put performances on for us. Okay. At, at, at the theater. Here, here, here uh, is where the projection screen was at the back of the, the stage. Okay. And, and that was all decorated there at Christmas time. And here we show where we actually, like we had, um, we had a, a, a priest come and say mass here in, in, in the church. In the church, I mean, in, in a theater. Okay. Now back here is uh, this is a, a, a and this had many quarters. This is a this is the rear of the manor house. Uh, they, they later put up these buildings, mm -hmm. and that's where all the invested men are located. Okay, here's here's more more of the same. Is this all right? You move this around like this? Yeah. And, uh, and here is a recreation. They built a recreation hall. Uh, you know, ping pong, ping pong tables. And, and uh, okay. here, here it shows right here. And then also, uh, we had this, this uh, exchange where you could go buy your uh, carton of cigarettes, you know, one, of, one carton a week. Okay. You, you could buy. That would, you would go to your exchange and, and get other things that they had for sale. Okay. And here's a, the kitchen and the mess hall was originally at the manor house. The, the kitchen? Yep. And that was a, a picture of the eating area. And then, okay. then there's, a, there's a building uh, where Near the 2006, the, that's the, the, the cottage. Uh, they, they had a it was a, a recreation place for the, the people living there, and they and they made that into a kitchen okay. and, and dining room. That's what that's what these pictures are. Here's, here's a picture of inside. Now here is a the maintenance shop right here. And I don't know if I had mentioned, but our, our whole base was basically an auto, uh, an auto place. They did all, all uh, kind of work on, on okay. autos. And we also had, in addition, we had, uh, find it. This is more of uh, 
of old parts. We had all, all parts of trucks. They were all over England. They would uh, send, send a truck over to pick up parts that, that we, we uh, had here. Okay. And here you, you see uh, in, in the, the garage where all the cars were. And this is uh, more, more of the uh, auto parts were in there. utility building that would be sort of do any repair what happened you know when we got over there uh, everything was on 220 mm -hmm. and, and all our equipment was 110 mm -hmm. you know, so the big problem was getting transformers and you know yeah. to didn't knock it down you know so all, all the voltages that they had in england was 220 mm -hmm. and, and all our equipment was 110 mm -hmm. and so that, that was you know a problem, which we got around. This is more of the old, old the welding shop. So we had a welding shop. Here's a motor pool office where you, where you, where you go down and you get it, there's all the, all the trucks and all that you could use for official business. Okay. And, uh, and that's where, that's where I'm located to the motor pool area, motor pool area, motor pool area, and all those pictures. Okay. Yep, I got it. And here is an automotive parts depot. The history is on, you know, it's complicated. But, but anyway, this is uh, all, all the auto parts that uh, they would come in to pick up. And that's, that's the office that was handling all, okay. all those parts. And it's all more of the same. And here's a good picture of uh, the warehouse with all with all the parts in there. And here is a this is a group this is a the chemical there was a chemical depot. Uh, it was on the hill in back of the manor house up on a hill was a chemical company. Okay. But that what happened, you know, actually when when they left they buried a lot of the stuff in the bridge. Mm -hmm. It all shook up about because of all the poisons sure. that were in the ground. Now here uh, at, uh, what would have happened, a lot of fellows would would build things out of wood and then uh, there's a lot of orphanages around. Uh -huh. Bedford is the, the closest to uh, Millstone Park. And, uh, and so there is the orphanages. And so the fellows would build things and then deliver them you know, on, on the holidays. Okay. Now this was uh, this is a picture of the uh, the armor unit that I, I was in mm -hmm. here. This is a, a group of us, I'm in that picture, and, and that's just the, the, the cover sheet was, was this one. Okay. And here's another picture of the, the group. I know I took this picture, and what I did is there was a timer on it, and I ran and got in the back row. Uh, okay. To, uh, and this, and here is uh, the automatic pilot. It was it's built on a board here to you know, work work through it. Mm -hmm. it's designed for, for the bombers. And it's, and it's here working on it. And here is the, the engineering. 
shop that we had in this big, it's not an hanger, a machine shop. There is a, this was my uh, chief in the armor he was right here. Okay. This is a welding shop. And these are the machine shops that we had. picture of me in the photo. Here I am in the photo lab that we had. Okay. Now here's the, the, the area for uh, for the ammunition. Put in one area all the ammunition that we use for for different tests. We actually worked for both the 8th the and 9th Ninth Air Force solving problems that they come up with. Okay. And here is in, in, in back of our uh, the big building, the big building where a lot of shops were. In back of it, we, we had about this a few flies of a B-24, B-17, and a B-26. I actually went and retrieved that the B-26 and uh, we, had, we had a, a big flatbed truck. Okay. And, uh, okay, I, I can't hear you with, with that book in front of your oh, your yeah. face, so if you can just lower it a little bit. Okay. Uh, and then uh, uh, I went, or a couple of fellows, we, <clears throat> we went to pick up this uh, fuselage of a 26 that we wanted to bring back here. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, and then we're, the, the streets are so narrow, we're going through a town. I remember we had a, these sharp turns we had to make. And I remember knocking down signs, people's yeah. beer signs or whatever, you know, as we were driving through. I guess we couldn't control, you know. Uh -huh. And here's a camera is where I show. Testing uh, the captured German bombs. That's uh, so that, that's, that's a picture of me here. Uh, here I'm in a B-17. Okay. And, and those pictures of me in a B-17, but I also flew in this P-38. Okay. Now here's uh, the turret that we, in, in that big building I was talking about, we had, we had a, a turret section that you could work on problems. Okay. A turret section. Uh, here is a uh, uh, photos of, of a band leader, and that's uh, Glenn Miller. Okay. And Glenn Miller. And I was here the day that he came, I was off on a project, so uh, Anyway, we have a lot of pictures of Glenn Miller and his band right in front of a manor house. And in fact, you see. Okay. Uh, you actually see the, the group of them, the group of the fellows, you know, watching. Okay. Being entertained. You know, by, uh, okay. And uh, there's a close up. Of, of the group. And this is where I had mentioned, I have to put this down, well, that's now, uh, this was Twin Woods. Okay. I had mentioned Twin Woods. You know, there's a picture of a, a group of us, a group of us that went over, went over on one of the trips. They said I went over three times. And uh, so here at Twin Woods, I had mentioned that uh, Glenn Miller, that's where he took off to go to France, and his, mm -hmm. and his plane disappeared. Uh, the ocean, you know. 
Okay. So they made this in a terrific museum now. Mm -hmm. and the, the, the fact that how I was in touch with sent me pictures now. It's really a, a remarkable thing business that I mean, it them all over the museum. Okay. And do you want to explain this picture here? Now this, uh, what happened is uh, I had come from, uh, from Britain, and that's when I flew uh, uh, to a, a ten, uh, was that one? to go to Washington, D.C. to take this course on the proximity fuse. And uh, what happened is, uh, I, uh, I just have to think about it. After taking this course in, in Washington, D.C., and then we went to Maryland, actually, Aberdeen, Maryland, where we actually dropped, where this was to, to see the proximity fuse mm -hmm. operating with, with small bombs. Or, they, had, they showed the air bases we'd get, mm -hmm. and we were witnessing that. And uh, so after, after uh, completing that course, they gave me a 10-day leave. Uh, and I went home, and that's a, while I was there, the, the, we took the, the picture of my wife and I, and we took, I was doing my 10-day leave in uh, 1944. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so this is uh, before I returned back to England. Okay. And that's what that, that's how I came about, you know, that okay. uniform. There's all right. A, there's a, well, uh, here's all the summary of all the, I said there was 19 reunions. This was after the war. Was okay. 19, 19 reunions. And, here they are. and we ended up with, uh, uh, in Pennsylvania, with the, with the last one. Okay. There's a uh, one that uh, on the, the subject of promotion. I wanted to yeah, so what I wanted to make known here is that. Uh, this was written by this was written by the office of the armament unit. That's the, the unit I asked her to go and mm -hmm. work in. And uh, so um, the, the chief of head one, what was he? He was major, major of the army department. Anyway, he wrote this letter, uh, a recommendation for promotion. And that's there was two of us we had here. So Oh, I'm going to read this. Okay, uh, you're going to have to make it quick because we're almost... All through? Uh, well, we got a couple minutes left, so... I can end it. Huh? You want to end it now? No, no, I mean, you can, I'm just saying, uh, if you want to read part of it, I don't know if we'll have time to read the entire oh, oh, letter. Oh. Well, what it is is, uh, uh, I was in this unit for quite a while, the armor unit, and uh, there was no such thing as getting a raise, whatever you came in. Mm -hmm. It stayed that way, yep. and that's what that's what the, this fellow was trying to do. He was right. He was writing to my uh, my commander uh, to see if he, he couldn't get a better rating for me. That's mm -hmm. that's all it amounts to. Uh, he was suggesting that I a staff sergeant or a T3 uh -huh. because because in in all the uh, time I worked in the other fellows too in that armament unit, we had terrific jobs to do, but. There was no such thing as getting a promotion. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what that's. Is it? Okay. All right. All right. <clears throat> and when when was that dated? Uh, yes. uh, uh, just hold it up if you would, and I can probably zoom right in on it. Uh, now, March 13, 1945. March 13, 1945. And this is a story about whatever we came in with in that unit. See, I asked to leave the 2003rd. So the fellows that came in as a private stayed as a private, in other words. 
and was ordered. Okay. Was ordered. Yeah, unfortunately, I can't focus in on on all of that. Okay. When, when he wrote this, it was uh, the, the unit had been in existence 13 and a half months. Okay. All right. Okay. And uh, did you have any anything else there to show us? Yeah. Well. Uh, I got about uh, a minute and a half left. You know, this, this is a, a, a book which I... Oh, yeah, you wanted to show me the uh, picture of the plaque. Yeah, right. Yeah. Here's a... Okay, and, and when did you present this plaque? Um, I, had, I had the plaque made in, in Troy. Uh-huh. I, I designed it up from... And went and, uh, and had asked them if they could make a, a bronze plaque. Uh, okay. So what they did is they sent it to New York, and, and the plaque came back. And so what I did is I got a hold of this English couple that we worked with over. They lived in Bedford, mm -hmm. and uh, so I I sent the, the plaque over to them before we got there, and, uh, and that's when they had it mounted on the building. So that when when I came over with a group, that's when I took the DVD, the, the DVD of, uh, this is the, 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 it was a whole ceremony that we okay. had over the plaque. They had a, a, a curtains that they opened up showing the plaque, you know, and okay. they had a couple of ministers speaking. And, uh, okay. Uh, Thank you. All right.